Once upon a time, in midwinter, when snowflakes were falling like feathers from heaven, a queen sat sewing at her window, which had a frame of black ebony wood. As she sewed, she looked up at the snow and pricked her finger with the needle. Three drops of blood fell into the snow. The red on the white looked so beautiful that she thought to herself, If only I had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as the wood on this frame. Soon after, she had a little daughter, who was indeed as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as ebony wood. And therefore they called her Little Snow White. And as soon as the child was born, the queen died. A year later, the king took himself another wife. She was a beautiful woman, but she was proud and arrogant and she could not stand it if anyone might surpass her in beauty. She had a magic mirror, and every morning she stood before it, looked at herself, and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? To this the mirror answered, You, my queen, are fairest of all. Then she was satisfied, for she knew that the mirror spoke the truth. Snow White grew up, and became even more beautiful. When she was seven years old, she was as beautiful as the light of day, even more beautiful than the queen herself. One day when the queen asked the mirror, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? It answered, You, my queen, are fair, it's true. But Snow White is a thousand times fairer than you. The queen took fright, and turned yellow and green with envy. From that hour onward, she looked at Snow White, her heart turned inside her body. So great was her hatred for the girl. The envy and pride grew ever greater like weed in her heart, until she had no peace day and night. Then she summoned a huntsman and said to him, Take Snow White into the woods. I never want to see her again. Kill her, and as proof that she is dead. Bring me her lungs and her liver." The huntsman obeyed and took Snow White into the woods. He took out his hunting knife, and was about to stab into her innocent heart when she began to cry, saying, "'Oh, dear huntsman, let me live. I will run away into the wild woods and never come back.' Because she was so beautiful, the huntsman took pity on her and said, "'Run away, you poor child.' He thought the wild animals would soon devour you anyway, but still it was as if a stone had fallen from his heart, for he would not have to kill her. Just then, a young boar came running by. He killed it, cut out its lungs and liver, and took it back to the queen as proof of Snow White's death. The cook had to boil them with salt, and the wicked woman ate them, supposing that she had now eaten Snow White's lungs and liver. The poor child was now all alone in the great forest. She was so afraid that she just looked at all the leaves on the trees and did not know what to do. Then she began to run. She ran over sharp stones, through thorns. Wild animals jumped at her, but they did not harm her. She ran as far as her feet could carry her, and just as evening was about to fall, she saw a little house and went inside in order to rest. Inside the house, everything was so small, but so neat and clean that no one could say otherwise. There was a little table with a little white tablecloth and seven little plates. Each plate had a spoon, and there were seven knives and forks, seven mugs as well. Against the wall there were seven little beds, all standing in a row, covered with Snow White sheets. Because she was so hungry and so thirsty, Snow White ate a few vegetables and a little bread from each plate, and from each mug she drank a drop of wine. Afterward, because she was so tired, she lay down on a bed. None of them felt right. One was too long, the other one was too short, until finally the seventh one was just right. She remained lying in it, entrusting herself to God, and fell asleep. After dark, the masters of the house returned. They were seven dwarves, who picked and dug for ore in the mountains. They lit their seven candles, and as soon as it was light in their house, they saw that someone had been there. 
for not everything was in the same order as they had left it. The first one said, Who's been sitting in my chair? The second one said, Who's been eating from my plate? Who's been eating my bread? Who's been eating my vegetables? Who's been sticking with my fork? Who's been cutting with my knife? Who's been drinking from my mug? Then the first one saw that there was a little imprint on his bed and said, Who, who slept in my bed? The others came running out and shouted, Someone's been lying in mine as well. But the seventh one, looking at his bed, found Snow White laying there asleep. The seven dwarfs all came running up and cried out with amazement. They fetched their seven candles and shone light on Snow White. Good heavens! Oh, good heavens! they cried. This child is so beautiful. They were so happy, they didn't want to wake her up, but let her continue to sleep on the bed. The seventh dwarf had to sleep with his companions, one hour with each one, and then the night was done. The next morning, Snow White woke up, and when she saw the seven dwarves, she was frightened, but they were friendly and asked, What is your name? My name is Snow White, she answered. How did you find your way to our house? The dwarves asked further, and she told them of her stepmother, and how she tried to kill her, and that the huntsman had spared her life, and that she had to run the entire day, finally coming to their house. The dwarves said, If you keep house for us, and cook, make beds, wash, sew, and knit, and keep everything clean and orderly, then you can stay with us, and you shall have everything that you ever want. Yes, said Snow White, with all my heart. So she kept house for them. Every morning they went off to the mountains looking for ore and gold, and in the evening when they came home, their meals had already been ready. During the day the girl was alone. The good dwarves warned her, saying, Be careful about your stepmother. She will soon know that you're here. Don't let anyone in. Now the queen, believing that she had eaten Snow White's lungs and liver, could only think that she was again the first and most beautiful woman of all. She stepped before her mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? It answered, You, my queen, are fair. It is true. But Snow White, beyond the mountains with the seven dwarves, is still a thousand times fairer than you. This startled the queen, for she knew that the mirror did not lie, and she realized that the huntsman had deceived her, and that Snow White was still alive. Then she thought, and thought again, how she could kill Snow White, for as long as she was not the most beautiful woman in the entire land, her envy would give her no rest. At last she thought of something. Coloring her face, she disguised herself as an old peddler woman, so that no one could recognize her. In this disguise she went to the house of the seven dwarves, knocked on the door, and cried out, Beautiful wares for sale! For sale! Snow White peered out the window and said, A Good day, dear woman. What do you have for sale? Good wares, beautiful wares, she answered. A bodice lace of all colors. She took out one that was braided from colored silk. Would you like one of these? I can let that honest woman in, thought Snow White, then unbolted the door and bought the pretty bodice lace. Child, said the old woman, how you look. Come, let me lace you up properly. The unsuspecting Snow White stood before her and let her do up the new lace. But the old woman pulled so quickly and so hard that Snow White could not breathe. You used to be the most beautiful one, said the old woman, and hurried away. Not long after, in that evening time, the seven dwarves came home. How terrified they were when they saw the dear Snow White lying on the ground, not moving at all, as though she were dead. They lifted her up, and seeing that she was too tightly laced, they cut the lace in two. Then she began to breathe a little, and little by little, she came back to life. When the dwarves heard what had happened, they said, The old peddler woman, she was no one else but the godless queen. Take care, and let no one in when we're not with you. When the wicked woman returned home, she went to her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? The mirror answered once again, 
You, my queen, are fair, it is true. But Snow White, beyond the mountains with the seven dwarves, is still a thousand times fairer than you. When she heard that, all of the blood ran to her heart, because she knew that Snow White had come back to life. This time, she said, I'll think of something that will destroy you. Then, with the art of witchcraft that she understood, she made a poison comb. Then she disguised herself, taking the form of a different old woman. Thus she went across the seven mountains to the seven dwarves, knocking on the door and calling out, Good wares for sale! For sale! Snow White looked out and said, Go, go on your way. I'm not allowed to let anyone in. You surely may take a look said the old woman, pulling out a poisoned comb and holding it up. The child liked it so much that she let herself be deceived, and she opened the door. After they agreed on the purchase, the old woman said, Now, let me comb your hair properly. She had barely stuck the comb into Snow White's hair when the poison took effect, and the girl fell down unconscious. You specimen of beauty, said the wicked woman. Now you are finished. And she walked away. Fortunately, it was almost evening, and the seven dwarves came home. When they saw Snow White lying on the ground as if she were dead, they immediately suspected her stepmother. They examined her and found a poison comb. They had scarcely pulled it from her when Snow White came to herself again <gasps> and told them what had happened. Once again, they warned her to be on her guard and not to open the door for anyone. Back at home, the queen stepped before the mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? The mirror answered, You, my queen, are fair, it is true. But Snow White, beyond the mountains with the seven dwarves, is still a thousand times fairer than you. When the queen heard the mirror say this, she shook and trembled with anger. Snow White shall die, she shouted, if it costs me my life. Then she went into her most secret room. No one else was allowed inside. She made a poisoned, poisoned apple. From the outside, it was beautiful, white with red cheeks, and anyone who saw it would want it. But anyone who might eat a little piece would die. Then, coloring her face, she disguised herself as a peasant woman, and thus went across the seven mountains to the seven dwarves, and knocked on the door. Snow White stuck her head out the window and said, I'm not allowed to let anyone in. The dwarves have forbidden me to do so. That's all right with me, answered the peasant woman. I'll easily get rid of my apples. Here, I'll give you one of them. No, said Snow White. I, I can't accept anything. Are you afraid of poison? That's the old woman. Look, I'll cut the apple in two. You eat the red half, and I'll eat the white half. Now, the apple had been so artfully made that only the red half was poisoned. Snow White longed for the beautiful apple, and when she saw that this peasant woman was eating part of it, she could no longer resist. She stuck her hand out and took the poison half. She barely had bitten to it with her mouth when she fell to the ground, dead. The queen looked at her with a gruesome stare, laughed loudly and said, <laughs> Snow, <laughs> white as snow, red as blood, black as ebony wood, this time the dwarves cannot awaken you. Back home at the mirror, she asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? It finally answered, You, my queen are fairest of all. Then her envious heart was at rest, as well as an envious heart can be at rest. When the dwarves came home that evening, they found Snow White lying on the ground. She was not breathing at all. She was dead. They lifted her up and looked for something poisonous. They undid her laces. 
They combed her hair, they washed her with wine and water, but nothing helped. The dear child was dead, and she remained dead. They laid her on a bed, and all seven sat next to her, and mourned for her, and cried for three days. They were going to bury her, but she looked so fresh as a living person and still had her beautiful red cheeks. They said, we cannot bury her in the black earth. And they made a transparent coffin, so that she could be seen from all sides. They laid her inside, and with golden letters wrote on it her name, and that she was a princess. They put the coffin outside on a mountain, and one of them always stayed with it. Watch over her. The animals, too, came and mourned for Snow White, first an owl, then a raven, and finally a dove. Snow White lay there in the coffin a long, long time. She did not decay, but looked like she was asleep, for she was still as white as snow, as red as blood, and black hair as ebony wood. Now it came to pass that a prince entered these woods, and happened onto the dwarfs' house, where he sought shelter for the night. He saw the coffin on the mountain with the beautiful Snow White in it, read what was written on it with golden letters, and he said to the dwarves, Let me have the coffin. I will give you anything that you want for it. The dwarves answered, We will not sell it for all the gold in the world. Then he said, Then give it to me, for I cannot live without being able to see Snow White. I will honor her and respect her as my cherished one. As he spoke, the good dwarves felt pity for him and gave him the coffin. The prince had his servants carry it away on their shoulders, but then it happened that one of them stumbled on brush, and it dislodged from Snow White's throat the piece of poison apple that she had bitten off. Not long after she opened her eyes, lifting the lid from her coffin, sat up and was alive again. Good heavens, where am I? She cried out. The prince said joyfully, You're with me! He told her what had happened, and said, Come with me to my father's castle. You shall become my wife. Snow White loved him, and she went with him, and their wedding was planned with great splendor and majesty, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs>